Hello, I'm Sylvia. I'm a researcher in the group of Magda Titiwici at Imperial College London. In this series of video, we will show you how we test electrochemical technologies at the laboratory scale. In particular, this video will focus on the assembling and testing on coin cells. As you may already know, batteries come in multiple configurations. The most common are coin, cylindrical, pouch and prismatic cells. Coin cells are the simplest design possible. They feature a single layer of cathode, separator and anode. Thanks to their simplicity of design and assembly, they are often used when tested in a battery component at a lab scale. You might have seen them in your watch. Cylindrical cells is the configuration we normally think about when we mention batteries. They are based on the same components, which are now rolled up into cylinder. Prismatic cells are very similar, but now the components are rolled up in a prismatic shape. Both cylindrical and prismatic cells are enclosed in a rigid metal casing. Finally, we have pouch cells, which you might now have seen in your phone or computer. They are based on several horizontal stacks of the same components, now sealed in a mini minimalistic and lightweight foil packaging. In this video, we will focus on the assembly of coin cells. The essential components of a battery are the two electrodes, anode and cathode, and the separator, filled with the electrolyte. Several battery chemistry have been demonstrated, but for simplicity we will focus on lithium-ion batteries. During discharge, lithium ions travel from the anode to the cathode through the separator and generate a flow of electrode in the opposite direction. During charge, the opposite happens and lithium ions are transported once again from the anode to the cathode. Let's see how this looks in the lab. First, the anode and cathode are prepared. The active material of interest, which usually comes as a powder, is mixed with a solvent and a binder. This slurry is then deposited on a counter collector, and a doctor blade is used to create a uniform coating. This machine will take the slurry and dispense it at a constant rate on the current collector, while using a blade to control the thickness. Out of this slurry, an electrode of the desired side is then cut out by punching it. Now our electrode is ready and we can assemble the coin cell in a glove box. A glove box is a sealed container which is filled with argon, removing the presence of oxygen and water which would violently react with most battery chemistry. To assemble a coin cell, we first start from the anode and then we can add the separator. Once we added the separator, we can now add a few microliters of electrolyte. This is then followed by the cathode. If testing the battery in a half cell configuration, the anode can be lithium metal. In this case, the potential at the anode is that of lithium metal to lithium ion, which acts as a reference electrode. Now you see we're adding the spacer and the spring, and we're closing the coin cell. To see the coin cell, we then, we then close it using a pneumatic crimping machine. This applies a chosen pressure to seal the coin cell. And now you can see how the seal coin cell looks like. We are now ready to test our batteries. But before we need to take it out of the glove box through the antechamber and bring the antechamber back to vacuum. To test the battery, we use a temperature control environment where several batteries can be tested at once. The most common experiment involves charging and discharging the battery at a constant current, while monitoring the change in potential. The results show the change in potential as a function of time, and if we zoom in, you can see that each increase and decrease in potential correspond to a charge and discharge cycle. Rather than reporting the results at the potential versus time, these are often shown as potential versus capacity curve, where the capacity is the integral of the current over time. Each curve here represents again a charge discharge and a cycle, and if the battery has had 100% fire-like efficiency, all this curve would overlap. 